Hey there, darling. Welcome to the Farmer's Table. My name is Jess. I'm so glad to have you here in my kitchen today. A long time ago, when I was just dreaming of becoming a homesteader and a scratch cook, and I had my romantic notion of what that would look like, I had this idea in my mind, one day, I'm going to be this person that makes my own butter. I had it really up there on the pedestal as far as romantic things that a homestead person can do. And it's funny because when I tell people that I am a homesteader, so we, you live off the land, you like make your own butter. Why is that the thing that we have equated with homesteading? I don't really know, but I do know that when you talk about homesteading, it does bring up this image of like prairie dresses and butter churns for whatever reason. Uh, this is my butter churn these days, and though I do love homemade butter that is fresh from our cows, um, I can't say that it's necessarily the most romantic thing that happens in farm life. It's actually just become another chore. So in order to make butter, you need heavy cream. And the bottom line, this is very, very simple. If you take any heavy cream and you agitate it long enough, meaning shake it, stir it, mix it, blend it, churn it, um, the, the solids, the butter fats, are going to separate from the liquid in the cream and you are going to have butter and then essentially butter milk, though it's not exactly the same as what you get at the store. And I'll get more to that later. With that being the case, I think making butter is a really cool novelty. If you have access to copious amounts of cream, for instance, if you have a dairy cow or if you know someone that has a dairy cow and you're able to get large amounts, then making butter is definitely an economical thing to do. And if I were to equate this non-GMO and organically raised butter with a store-bought equivalent, I mean, we're saving a lot of money making it from the animals that we raise. If you're going to go to the store and buy heavy cream to make butter, it's going to be way more expensive. So it's kind of cool for a novelty. It's kind of cool for something special to do. Uh, it's a fun thing to do with the kids. Or if you're having a dinner party and you want to make something special, you could definitely go that route. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as like a way of life because I don't know that the homemade butter bought from store-bought cream is going to be really that much better than the you know store-bought butter. In fact when we do not have copious amounts of cream during certain times of year when the cows aren't producing as much um, if I have to buy butter from the store I typically just buy the grass-fed Irish butter that's nice and dark yellow and lots of good flavor and it largely compares to what we make at home especially when it's the winter time, the cream that comes from the cows in the winter time, they're eating a lot of hay. It's not as rich in beta carinines, and so it's not even as yellow as that store-bought butter whenever I'm making it home. Today, it probably will not be as yellow because it's winter and they're on hay. The butter in the spring when the grass starts growing, it is glorious. It really is amazing. So I'm going to be using a mixer for this today. Um, this is a, a Bosch stand mixer essentially. I also have a KitchenAid. I've made butter in the KitchenAid many times and you can do that. Uh, you just need to be super vigilant or you have a splash guard to put on it because when this separates, and I'll show you the process, but it's gonna thicken and then eventually it's gonna break, which is where the solids and the liquids come apart. And when that happens, you have these gobs of butter fat solid butter in all of this liquid and it's still spinning really fast, which means if you're not paying attention to stop the mixer when that moment happens, your kitchen is going to be coated in buttermilk violently. So I like this mixer for this particular job because it doesn't splash out as much when that happens and sometimes I'm not paying super close attention. If you don't have this equipment and you want to try making some butter just for the fun of it, uh, you can take a mason jar, shake it, it takes a while. You might want to have a couple of helping hands that you can pass it off to and just keep shaking it. First you'll get whipped cream and then it will break and you will have your butter and your buttermilk. And that's a really fun thing to do, especially with kids or if you just want to have like a little bit of butter to go with a dinner. You can, you can do that. I think it's really fun. So here I have some heavy cream. This is actually about a week and a half old, meaning that it's just starting to sour a tiny bit. So you have two different kinds of butter butter that you can make. You can make sweet cream butter, which is typically what you buy whenever you go to the store, or you can make cultured butter, which cultured butter is made from 
cream that has either had a culture added to it. Some people will just leave it out on the counter for a day to let it sour. And in the case of what I'm doing today, I'm just using some cream that's been in the fridge long enough that it started to naturally sour, which just means that the bacteria that is naturally occurring in milk um, has eaten through all of the sugars that were occurring in the milk and that's why I'm getting the sour taste. So with cultured butter, it's really just a matter of preference. We do make both. Sometimes we make sweet cream butter um, and sometimes we do cultured. It's not something that we calculate that much. It's basically just, you know, when we have time and what we have on hand at the time. If you go to the grocery store and you buy heavy whipping cream and you turn that into butter, you would have sweet cream butter because obviously that's not cultured. So I've got a little bit over a quart here. It really depends on the size of the container that you're going to be making this in. I'm going to put all of this in here because this mixer can actually take this much. I have done half a gallon at a time in here and sometimes it does splash out and make a little bit of a mess. In the KitchenAid, I usually only do a quart at a time. Now I've got my whisk attachment here in the mixer. All right, I'm gonna turn this on a medium and let it run. I'll keep an eye on the time and I'll show you the different stages of development from this cream's journey into butter. All right, I'm pausing after about a minute and I want you to see this. Here we have a nice whipped cream. This is definitely a little sour. Um, Obviously you probably don't want whipped cream that's a little sour. Cultured whipped cream is not really gonna go. I, well, now that I'm thinking of that from like a, a cook's perspective, I think it could go really good with something like really sweet and peachy or something. Anyway, I digress. That's probably not what you're looking for. But if you want to make whipped cream, this is all you have to do. Heavy whipping cream, um, if you want to sweeten it, putting a little splash of maple syrup in it, a little bit of sugar, uh, and then blending it up for you can do it in a blender, in a food processor. You can do it with an immersion blender in a jar. That's a lot of times what I do. And just letting it go for like, it, it takes like a minute to make whipped cream, which of course you can then use to, to top desserts or to use on pies or in coffees or anything like that. But today that's not what we're doing. Today we want butter. So we're gonna turn the speed back up to medium. <laughs> My whipped cream is starting to get pretty stiff and it's also splashing up on the walls a lot. So I'm just gonna take a second and scrape the sides down. Okay, this is when things really first start to separate. See the texture here. And this is when you really need to start paying attention. So it's gonna get real soupy and it's gonna start coming together very quickly. All right, okay. here we have butter, but we're not done yet. It took a total of about 15 minutes from start to this step. And that's including me stopping a couple of times, scraping it down, shooting a little video clip. I've had a lot of people tell me that they use either a blender or a food processor to make butter. Um, in my experience, you, you can, but you have to be very, very mindful at that step, right when your butter starts to separate. Because with a blender and a food processor, you have blades instead of whisks. And when you get to this point that you have your separated butter solids from the buttermilk, um, those blades will actually effectively whip all that back together. And you'll end up with this really gross, messy, mushy mess that's very, very hard to strain and separate. I like the mixer for that reason. I was using my KitchenAid for a long time and it would hit that point of just like splashing everywhere. I had to just pay really, really close attention. Um, and on kitchen days, whenever I was spending a ton of time in the kitchen getting a lot done, my KitchenAid was constantly tied up because sometimes we'll have three gallons of cream to do at a time and when you can only do like a quart at a time obviously that's going to take a long while so i actually went looking for like an electric butter churn and i found that they're actually really hard to get a hold of now you can sometimes find vintage ones but that's why i ended up buying a second mixer and i got that bosch uh, which is great for doing doughs as well but i specifically bought that because i thought the shape would be good for making butter and it has been so i'm setting up in my sink a bowl with a strainer in it and i'm going to start by just getting all of the butter solids off of the whisk you can see how pale this is that's because the cows are on hay right now when the grass starts growing this will be like like almost orangey yellow it's really cool and next i'm going to pour 
here. Um, you can see I've got lots of clumps in here. And I'm going to pour this through the strainer. Um, so that's going to reserve this liquid. So this liquid that's left over, um, you can use it like you would buttermilk. Now in the case of this particular liquid, because that sour, that cream was a little sour, this is going to have more of that cultured taste. Um, I didn't put any particular cultures in it. You could take this further and culture it further, but usually what I'll do is like if I'm making biscuits or I can make pancakes and I just replace the, the water in the recipe with this, or um, if it calls for buttermilk, you can totally use this in that case. Now, if you were using sweet cream, and you you can use that liquid in any sort of recipe. Uh, however, you're not going to get the same buttermilk tang if you use that sweet cream buttermilk or what's left over. Um, a lot of times, if we're doing a whole lot of butter at once, this just goes to the pigs, but you can totally play with this and find other uses for it. So the next step is we have to take our butter and we have to get all of the liquid that is in it that's trapped in little pockets out. Because that is going to cause this to spoil a lot faster and what that spoilage is going to do is going to make our butter taste like funky cheese we don't want that so uh, the first step is to just start squeezing it squeezing any liquid that's in there out you can turn on some cold water and run it underneath the water and squeeze while you go the risk here is that you don't want your butter to get too soft while you're working it uh, because then it's just going to stick all over your hands and be a mess. You want to keep it cold. One thing I like to do, take some ice, put it in a bowl, put a little bit of water over it, and that way while I'm working the liquid out of my butter, I can drop it in this bowl and give it like 15 seconds to cool off and then work it a little bit more. So I'll run it underneath here, squeeze, which you'll see liquid kind of squirting out in little pockets here. That's that whey that's trapped in there. Drop it in the ice water let it rest for 15 or 20 seconds and then pick it back up and squeeze it some more and occasionally here i'm going to run it underneath the water just to wash off anything that's coming out now how meticulous you're going to be here on this step really comes down to how much butter you're making how long you're wanting to store it uh, if you want the longest shelf life you need to get absolutely as much of this liquid out of it as you can since we do use butter making as a way to store our excess milk and have purpose for it um, we make lots of butter and we freeze it so we do really try to get as much of the liquid out as possible so that it's going to stay fresher i'd say at this point i'm not seeing much else come out of this so we're going to move over to a cutting board so you could at this point just take this and use it this is butter if you want to work it even more these are called butter paddles i mean if you're like really going to get serious about making butter something like this is be good if you're just going to make it occasionally you don't need to buy something like this i actually need my ice water and when it starts getting warm it'll start being melty so i'm going to put it back in the ice water bath one really great thing to do with fresh made butter since it is nice and soft and pliable is to work in flavors to make a compound butter so if you didn't have tons of cream and you just wanted to do this occasionally that's kind of a nice way to do it where you just take the butter and you mix it in some like minced garlic some fresh herbs, paprika or garlic powder, onion powder, um, and mix it all together. And, and that goes really great, like a pat of that on a freshly grilled steak, or you can spread it on fresh sourdough bread, and it's really nice to have. I feel like if you're not making butter because it's cheaper, um, making it so that you have like a special treat, that's a, that's a nice way to make it special. Here is also where you decide whether you want your butter to be salted or not. That's preference. Some people prefer using salted butter, butter because they like the taste. Salt is a preservative, so it is gonna help it stay fresher longer. However, I typically don't salt my butter uh, just because I like to have complete control over the amount of salt that's going in my food. And if my butter has an unknown measure of salt in it, um, it's gonna be hard for me to know while I'm cooking how much that's actually contributing to the, to the dish. The butter paddles are great just for squeezing of course you could do this with your hands but this does kind of help work it and work out any excess liquid and then of course the butter paddles are really nice to use for actually shaping how you want to store your butter if you're going to salt it or add any sort of herbs or other seasonings at this point just work it in so that it is evenly distributed so i've got my kitchen scale here i'm going to show you exactly how much this made uh, here's one out of the freezer so this is how we store it um, this is eight ounces we always put the weight the date and if it is soured or cultured 
uh, butter, we can put that on there. We just write sour on there so that we know when we're cooking what we're in for. Using soured butter or cultured butter in any sort of baked goods is really nice. It adds like a level of flavor, but you wouldn't necessarily want to spread it on like your toast. So here today from a little over a quart of cream, we have 14 ounces of butter. Uh, so I'm just gonna cut that in half. I don't like to freeze lumps of butter this big because then they just take a while to thaw out. And I typically like to be able to thaw it out and use it pretty quickly. They make molds and different things like that. For us, this works just fine. For a lot of people who make butter from scratch, they just put it in like a little dish or something like that and store it in the fridge. It will harden up just like any other normal butter in the fridge and you'd have to put it out to room temperature to make it soft and spreadable again. But that's it, there's our homemade butter. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.